looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. So we'll go with a traditional Corsat 2020 draft, let's go. Alright, pack one, pick one, what do we have? Our rare is not amazing, Bishop of Wings. Has a little bit of synergy with like the three mana uncommon angel that we can realistically get in a draft. So this is not going to be an amazing card in draft for the most part. What else do we have? Flame Sweep is pretty decent. Can potentially catch the opponent of guard and give you a nice sweeper. And it's also pretty splashable with just single red. So that's an option. The Stormkin is quite good, although it does commit us to two colors right away. Uh, anything else that jumps out, the Thief is quite good. And it pairs well with the Red Smuggler that can make it unblockable. If you can back this up with a ton of removal, it's great. So Thief is also great. And in green, there's like the Crasher, which is okay, but nothing too exciting. So yeah, I think the considerations here are Thief, Stormkin, and Sweep. I think they're all somewhat close in power level. And because of that, and the Stormkin being two colors, I think I'm leaning either Thief or Flame Sweep as single color cards that we can play in any deck with those colors. But we'll go with the Flame Sweep. Alright, and how about an Air Elemental? Pretty good card, 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. There are a decent amount of removal spells at common that can deal with this. Although 4 Toughness means it survives the 1 mana red airstrike that only deals 3 damage to flyers. So the extra toughness is important. Anything else that stands out? Shock is okay. So that would probably be the other consideration in this pack. The rest of the pack is not too exciting. I guess Season of Growth is also worth pointing out here. Definitely a powerful card if you can build around it enough. So in your uh, green base pump spell deck, Season of Growth is gonna excel. So yeah, I guess there's three considerations, Shock, Season of Growth, and Air Elemental. Shock keeps us in red, but is probably a little bit weaker than the Uncommons. Air Elemental plays quite well with the Flame Sweep, since it doesn't even take damage from it, and just gives us a nice, uh, powerful flyer. Personally, I would probably lean towards Air Elemental, but uh, yeah, I could see also taking the Season of Growth. haven't really played with this card much, and it might be one of those that tends to overperform and uh, yeah we could still easily play like a, a red green deck where flame sweep and season of growth are both going to be good all right third pick so what are the most individually powerful cards in this pack loyal pegasus is quite good for an aggressive deck the troll is pretty decent if we're heavy green and I've got the Smuggler as an excellent uh, evasive creature in red. And then I guess Scorpion's also okay. Keldon Raider's okay. Sentinel's playable. But the cards I'm looking at here are Smuggler, Troll, and Pegasus. Smuggler keeps us in red potentially for the Flame Sweep, although not the best combo with Flame Sweep necessarily. If we take Pegasus, we could potentially pivot into like a blue-white flyer stack, which could be okay. If we take the Troll, then we're probably looking at a blue-green elemental deck, potentially splashing red for Flame Sweep. Or we could still end up in red-green after all. All three of these picks are defensible, I think. So yeah, we'll, we'll take the Troll and try it out. And then we'll see where we end up here. We're not committed to any of these colors, so the pack is kind of going to guide us towards hopefully a decent deck and this pack is pretty weak comparatively uh, apostles playable in white but also not like too exciting um we've got portal if we end up with a ton of enter the battlefield abilities right now we don't have any and i guess there's like a growth cycle if we end up with a few could be an okay pump spell in maybe a red green or a, a blue green deck, although then we kind of wished we had taken that uh, Season of Growth. And then I guess there's also Marauder Sacks, it's just an okay equipment that can fit into any deck. Yeah, nothing too exciting. 
If we had any synergy with the portal, I would maybe take it as a hedge. But we don't have anything. Yeah, Befuddle's playable. But it's kind of a random filler card that we can probably pick up later if we want it. I think I'll kind of hedge on this growth cycle, since if we do end up with two or three, I think it's actively good. As a one-off, it's not amazing, but... I think it has more potential than just taking a random axe, which is better by itself than the grow cycle. But the grow cycle could potentially be pretty good if we end up with a couple. Now it's probably just a Frost Links, probably the best card remaining in the pack. Uh, Kelnerator would also be okay. But we're probably looking to be base blue green anyway. Splashing red, so we don't really want to take a double red Kelnerator. And Lynx is a pretty decent card in any deck. Alright, that's another pretty late Loyal Pegasus. So not many blue or green cards we want here. Feral Invocation can be okay if we have enough uh, creatures. If we have a lot of big creatures, maybe with Trample that the opponent is going to be forced to block, then Feral Invocation can be a bit of a blowout. Best card in the pack overall. Probably like either the Bone Splinters or the Aerial Assault or the Pegasus. But we don't have a ton of support for those cards right now. Could also take the Airstrike as a sideboard card. Yeah, this is the first pack where white seemed more open. I guess we had another pack with a, a Pegasus, but I've seen Pegasus go pretty late, so the bots just don't take it early, so it's not necessarily a sign that white is open. But yeah, this is the first pack where maybe we're getting the sign that white should be one of our colors, although the previous packs didn't necessarily point towards that. We're definitely not committed to any colors yet, although I would like to play a blue. The green cards are maybe a bit less exciting than the blue ones. Bone Splinters could be fine if we end up uh, in black with maybe some skeletons to sacrifice. Probably going to be at its best in red-black where we have a bit of a token theme as well. Looks like people still like the Feral Invocation, stick to green. That's fair. I don't think we're missing out on too much. Alright, what do we have here? Well, had we taken the Bone Splinters then Sanitarium Skeleton would have been a nice follow-up. Uh, had we taken a white card, we would have had, I guess, Sleep Paralysis and Tranquil Cove to consider. But now we can just take the Sleep Paralysis as a, just a fine card as a blue removal spell. There are some drawbacks to these types of removal spells if the opponent can bounce their own creature, for example. And 4 mana isn't the most efficient, but it does deal with even the larger creatures. So yeah, we'll take the Paralysis and then look to be blue-green, maybe with a red splash, but we'll see how the next packs go here. We've got some options. Three cards to consider. We've got Pattern Matcher, which doesn't have anything to match yet, but it could. It's kind of a build-around card. Uh, Vorsklaw is just a big creature, it's also elemental, so it has a bit of elemental synergy as well. It gives us something big to kind of work towards. Or we can take the Cryptic Caves, although if we take the Cryptic Caves then we're not going to be looking to splash red, we're probably just going to be blue-green with the Cryptic Caves, since I don't think we want to play this in a three-color deck. So yeah, another close decision here, and I could see a good reasoning for either one of these. Alright, looks like people like the Pattern Matcher, so we'll try that out here. So, got our first pack back, where we wield Salvager of Ruin. Not amazing. What else do we have? Denizen could be a win condition by itself. Could be pretty fun if we've got like multiple Sages Road Denizens and then Pattern Matcher to find all those Denizens and use that as a win condition. I could definitely see that working out. Could also just take the Gift of Paradise as an okay ramp card and Mana Fixer to maybe help us splash the Flame Sweep. That would also be totally fine. And Anticipate is also always just a filler card that uh, could make the deck. So again, like three defensible options. Alright, people like the Denizen, we'll give it a shot. Wow, Season of Growth wield. That's surprising. But I guess we can take it now, we already have a growth cycle. We could pick up more. So... We'll take it. Healer of the Glade could also be an okay signboard card. But, uh, gotta take the Season here. Nothing here. Maybe we'll splash an Act of Treason in some matchup. Befuddle wield. Befuddle wield. I 
and Sanitarium Skeleton, last pick. I think this card's pretty decent. So what do we have going on in our deck right now? We're blue-green. Um, got some reasonable beatdown creatures here with Troll and Lynx and an Aerolmantle. Don't have anything to pattern match yet. We've got this Plan B maybe with the Sages Rodenison in the works. But if we don't get there, then of course we don't have to play it. Don't have any fixing yet for the Flame Sweep, so that's also still a maybe. And we've got a Season of Growth, which also plays well with the Invocation and the Growth Cycle. So right now, it's probably more likely that we want to make the Season of Growth work and just be kind of a blue-green beatdown deck, pick up some additional Growth Cycles, more 2-drops, some more evasive creatures, and just be kind of like a blue-green aggressive deck, instead of necessarily going down the Elemental Synergy path. Although, of course, we'll happily play any Risen Reefs we pick up. Uh, don't have any fixing yet for the Flame Sweep, so I also don't think it's likely that we end up playing the Flame Sweep, but it's definitely still an option. So, don't love our position after the first pack, but could still uh, end up with a decent deck here if we can make this Season of Growth and Growth Cycle synergies work. Alright, how about another Season of Growth? Well, we wield the first Season of Growth, so there's also a chance we wield this one. Otherwise, Rabbit Bite is pretty decent removal. Uh, does this also work with Season of Growth? Yeah, that should work. So that also draws us a card with the Season. So it has some uh, good synergy there too. There's another Growth Cycle. So I'm thinking we probably just take the Rabbit Bite and then hope to either wheel Season or Growth Cycle. And we're pretty likely to wheel one of those. The alternative is just taking the Season and then hoping one of these wheels. But I think we probably want a removal more than we want an extra season, even though it's a nice uh, build around. So yeah, let's take the rabbit bite and then see how this pans out. Alright, this is a pretty strong pack for us. A lot of options to consider. I don't think Cerulean Drake is one of them, but if it wheels it could be a, a good sideboard card. I am looking at this Boreal Elemental as a nice one, 3-4 flyer, that's more difficult to deal with. We've got Cloudkin Seer, which is excellent. 3 mana, 2 1 that replaces itself. And we even have like a High Land in case we wanted to splash Flame Sweep. And another copy of Sleep Paralysis. But I think the two major considerations here are the two flyers here Cloudkin Seer and Boreal Elemental. I think this is mostly a curve consideration. If we already have a lot of 3 drops, maybe we can take the Elemental. If we already have a lot of top end cards, maybe we take the Cloudkin Seer. Yeah, the spider is also fine, but I wouldn't take it over the Boreal Elemental. Looking at our curve. So let's take this out of the deck. So looking at our curve. Like, we don't have much at 3 and we don't have much at 5. So I guess both would be fine additions. And I always say, when in doubt, take the cheaper card, which here would be the Cloudkin Seer. And it might honestly just be better than the Elemental anyway. So I think I'll take the Cloudkin. Alright, this is a pretty good pack as well. Howling Giant is pretty strong for a 7-drop. Adds 9 power and toughness to the board. And it has reach itself, so it usually stabilizes the board right away. Uh, Leafkin Druid would also be quite good here, helping us ramp, being an Elemental for any potential Elemental synergies. But Howling Giant is one of the better curve toppers we can hope for. Uh, we even have a bit of synergy with the wolves in that we can kind of pump them up with our pump spells afterwards. So even in the late game, those 2-2s two are not necessarily going to be blocked by the opponents. Yeah, I think I'm leaning Giant, even though Leafkin is also pretty strong. Alright, so what do we have here? Got a Netcaster Spider and an Octoprofit, which are both reasonable. This gives us a bit of game against opposing flyers. This gives us a bit of card selection. Um, so this is also more like a curve consideration, because they're both totally fine cards by themselves. I think I'm leaning Octoprofit over Spider. We're in blue, we already have a few flyers and reach creatures, so we're not too worried about needing the Spider. So I think Octoprofit is just a fine curve fit here. And we could take another growth cycle now. There's also another pattern matcher. I uh, don't have anything to go with the weaponsmith yet. There's a Vorsclaw, another curve topper, although we already just picked up Howling Giant. 
probably leading the growth cycle here to make sure we end up with a couple of these. Combines nicely with our season of growth. All right, overgrowth elementals looking good. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on another elemental we control. I've got a few of those, so it combines well with Cloudkin, Frostlings, plays well with the uh, Air Elemental, and we'll probably pick up a few more. And when another creature you control dies, you gain one. And if it's an Elemental, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on the Overgrowth Elemental. So just a pretty efficient card. Uh, Satch Scorpion would also be pretty good here, plays well with our Rabbit Bites, protects us from big creatures from the opponents. I think the Overgrowth Elemental just has a bit more upside, especially if we can pick up some more Elementals for those Elemental Synergies. It just beats down a bit harder if we can back it up with like uh, Growth Cycles or Feral Invocations. Alright, got some good options here too. Pulse of Marasak and return one of our good creatures from the graveyard, gain a bit of life. Ferocious Pop gives us two bodies in case we have a go white theme, which we don't really, but there's a, some cards that we could pick up that synergize with this. Don't think we're too interested in the mana fixing at this point. I don't think we're needing to play the flame sweep. Already have a decent amount of three drops, probably not playing the denizen at this point. Pulse is more of a late game card, can get back. Maybe an air elemental or a howling giant that died. Pretty good with uh, Cloudkin Seer. I don't mind it. Six life is also quite a lot, so it can help us in a race. All right, I uh, could take a natural end for the sideboard, but I think Tracker is a decent main deck card. Just uh, a lot of toughness and gives us a mana sink, which we don't currently have. And Season of Growth did indeed wheel. There's also a growth cycle still in the pack. So what do we want? We want kind of both of these, probably just leaning Season of Growth and then hope to get a couple more growth cycles in the next pack. But now we can actually build around this pretty effectively. I'll take the Drake for the sideboard. I guess we don't have many 2-drops yet, so if we need one I'll play the Sentinel. Alright, so the second pack went pretty well for us. Picked up a nice Rabbit Bite as removal, a second Growth Cycle, a second Season of Growth, and some decent creatures with the Cloudkin Seer, the uh, Overgrowth Elemental. Just kind of rounded out our deck nicely. Howling Giant has a Curved Topper here. So in the last pack, what are we looking for? Another growth cycle would be nice. Some good two drops would be nice. More Cloudkin Seers, more Elemental Synergies. Risen Reef, of course, would be a great one. And maybe something else to pattern match, since right now the pattern matcher doesn't actually have anything to go get. Nice sideboard card here. Alright, did not open a Risen Reef, did open some pretty good cards. Silverback Shaman is a good one, 5-4 Trample, when it dies draw a card. Plays quite well with all the pump spells in our deck. Boreal Elemental is pretty decent. Uh, Steel Overseer is also fine by itself, a bit of synergy with the Pattern Matcher. And then there's another Sleep Paralysis as removal, but I think we're mostly looking at the 5 drops here. Shaman versus Boreal. Given that we have so many pump spells, I'm liking the Silverback quite a bit. I don't think we're too excited about pattern matching a Greenwood Sentinel, so I'm not really looking at that. Plus, we're probably going to wheel it anyway. So we'll take the Silverback and then we might still get something nice out of this pack. Alright, another Rabbit Bite seems like a no-brainer here, as it plays great with our two copies of Season of Growth, gives us more removal. So now that we have two copies of Rabbit Bite, we're probably looking at uh, maybe picking up one of those Death Touch Scorpions, which play well with the Rabbit Bite. Overcome could also be okay as a finisher, but I think given that we already have all these pump spells with Season of Growth and Growth Cycles, we're less interested in maybe Overcome, since a lot of the non-creature slots in the deck are going to be dedicated to individual pump spells instead of these mass pump spells. 
if we had some ferocious uh, pops that make tokens and we had a more go white theme then overcome would be a bit better could still make our deck but i think we want a rabbit bite here all right now we're probably looking at the crasher trample is a nice keyword to have when we have a bunch of pump spells there's nothing else i'm too excited about like we already have a tracker it doesn't get much better in multiples and there's not much else uh, that we want plus it's also an elemental for elemental synergies gives other elementals trample as well so that's relevant if we maybe have a big overgrowth elemental or if our opponent tries to chum block our elemental All right, and there's a Scorpion that I was talking about. Bone to Ash, not exactly what this deck wants, even though we do have a few instants that we can keep up, like this Growth Cycle, Befuddle. We have, um, what else? I guess the ability on the 4-drop here, the Tracker. So we can potentially disguise Bone to Ash or use our mana effectively if the opponent doesn't play into it. But I think Scorpion just has too much going for it, given these two Rabbit Bites we have in our deck. And now I'll definitely take this Leafkin Druid as a nice 2-mana ramp creature. We don't have a ton of quality 2-drops in general, and uh, don't have money in the deck. And this is a pretty good one, helping us ramp into our more powerful cards. Got a lot of good 4-drops and 5-drops we can ramp towards, plus a 7-drop. So even though another Crash would be fine, I think the 2-drop's more important. Alright, so what do we have here? Not much. Could take a random spider. Looking at our curve, we have two 5-drops already. Could still play a spider here. There is a sentinel if we wanted another 2-drop and something to pattern match. Right now it doesn't look like we're going to be playing the pattern matcher. So we also have one fewer 4-drop. Could also take the plummet for the sideboard. But right now the spider might still make the main deck. But I think I'm leaning spider. All right, another Octoprophet seems okay, especially if we're not going to play Pattern Matcher. Now, it is a little awkward that this, of course, is a creature that we could potentially Pattern Match. So I guess it's going to depend whether or not we pick up some more duplicates. It doesn't seem likely that we end up with more duplicates. So in that case, Octoprophet is just going to replace Pattern Matcher, since I think if Octoprophet is the only creature we can Pattern Match, Pattern Matcher is not going to be good enough. Could also consider the Plummet for the sideboard since it is a pretty efficient uh, removal spell out of the sideboard against some decks. If we're not going to play the Spatter Matcher, we're going to want an additional 4-drop here. Otherwise we're a bit light. And the Scry 2 is pretty useful in a deck that tries to kind of combo with Season of Growth and find additional copies of Growth Cycle. And the Wolfkin Bond could be decent, it plays well with Season of Growth. Gives us another kind of curve topper type effect. Although Cryptic Caves is good too. Since we're not going to be splashing, this would give us some card draw in one of our lands, which is nice. But with double season of growth, I think uh, the Wolfkin Bond might actively be decent. So I think I'm leaning uh, Bond here. Take a Sentinel, I doubt we'll play it. Alright, we wield the Overcome. I don't think we're going to play it, but I could see a matchup where we want it. I doubt we want any of these other cards. I guess a Bow might be an okay sideboard card in some matchups. More Befuddles. Alright, so we didn't end up wielding anything particularly useful. Just a million Greenwood Sentinels. So, the deck's okay. Would have loved to pick up one or two additional copies of Growth Cycle. But, uh, I guess two copies will have to do. So let's take a look at our entire deck here. So, maybe playing one Sentinel, definitely not both. Don't think we're pattern matching. Don't know if we're gonna play Befuddle. The spider might go to the sideboard instead of the main deck now that we picked up the Wolfkin Bond at 5 as well. So we need to make about 3 cuts. 
So the way I envision winning most games is either going to be through outgrinding the opponent with a Season of Growth, just having better draws thanks to the Scry 1, and uh, drawing a few extra cards with the ability to have double Rabbit Bite, double Growth Cycle, Feral Invocation, Wolfkin Bond to all synergize with the Season of Growth. So that's a potential way to get ahead as well. And then we've got a few flyers, but not too many. So being able to get one back with Pulse of Marasa could be pretty key. And of course we could just kind of overpower the opponent. We do have some nice common seer with Cloudkin Seer drawing a card, Silverback drawing a card, and then Octoprofit also helps us smooth out our draw. So we do have a decent like amount of card draw and card selection going in our favor, even if our removal maybe leaves something to be desired. We do have double rabbit bites and a uh, sleep paralysis, but for the most part we're just trying to get on the board quickly and then kind of force the opponent into blocking situations where we can use our pump spells as functional removal spells. Also means that we need to make sure that we're ahead on board, since if the first play we make is like a four drop, then we're going to be behind on board most likely, and then these pump spells also become a bit worse. So having enough 2-drops, even if they're pretty weak, like this Greenwood Sentinel, is kind of important. So I think Befuddle's cuttable. Yeah, probably just putting the Spider in the sideboard against uh, specific matchups where we want more Flyers. And then we need to make one more cut. Could shave the second Octoprofit, that's reasonable. Yeah, I guess Befuddle, we could target our own creature to draw a card with the Season of Growth, so that's actually a pretty nice interaction to point out. We can just use Befuddle as an instant speed divination if we have a Season of Growth in uh, play. So maybe I do want uh, Befuddle anyway. Could be better than the Pulse of Morass at that point. And then we still need to make one cut. Not sure what that should be. Maybe just Octoprofits. And then our curve looks pretty reasonable. And we'll play the Befuddle. So I've got Scorpion, Sentinel, Leafkin, Troll, Double Season as early plays, Cloudkin, Lynx, Elemental, Octoprofit, Tracker, Crasher, Elemental, Shaman, Bond to grow one of our other creatures, and then Giant, and our interaction is Double Bite, Double Growth Cycle, Befuddle, Invocation, and Paralysis. Seems okay. Our mana base is skewed heavily towards green, since we have mostly green cards. Do need double blue for Aerial Mantle, so I don't think we can go below 8 islands. But 9-8 uh, seems fine, also giving us that double green for the troll early. So I think this mana base is okay. A giant Growth. I guess that's a pretty nice name. We're playing Howling Giant. We've got uh, Season of Growth, plus it's a, a reference to the age-old pump spell. Giant growth it is. Alright, let's go. Alright, opening hand with double islands featuring Barkhide Troll. Not exactly how we envisioned things happening. Let's go to six. Alright, this is better. And probably put island on the bottom. Could even make a case for bottoming the druids. But the Druid's a blocker, it is unlikely to die, and then also helps us ramp into Giant if we just draw a bunch of lands in a row. So I think I'm bottoming the land. We do need double blue for the Air Elemental, that's the only one that needs double blue. So if we draw that one off the top, we'll get punished for maybe not putting the Leafkin Druid on the bottom. But the plan is probably to play the Troll on turn 2. Could play it safe and like keep up one mana. But I think we got a beat down here. Next turn we can play Druid, keep up one mana. Chaplain's fine. So we're essentially trading two damage for one damage here. Although we've got the Leafkin Druid as a blocker, so we're basically just dealing two damage. If we draw land, we can play Shaman, otherwise Octoprofit is looking good. 
There are a few pump spells our opponent could have, but I'm not too sad if they play one here. Opponent does have three mana up, which is a little suspicious, maybe convolute. So I think I'm gonna lead with the Octo Prophet instead of the Silverback, but we'll attack first here, see what happens. Maybe they have a Befuddle they want to cycle. Yeah, I think I'll play the Octo Prophets. Alright, no counter spells. And let's have a look. A Wolfkin Bonds could be okay, although we are playing against Blue White. Uh, so they could have Bound spells, they could have Pacifisms. I don't think we need the Scorpion, since it kind of lines up poorly against a 1-3 lifelinker and we don't have a Rabbit Bite. Plus we've got plenty of big creatures in case we do draw a Rabbit Bite. So the only consideration here is whether or not we want the Wolfkin Bond. I think I like it. And pass the turn for now. And then next turn we have to decide if we want to play the Shaman or if we want to play the Wolfkin Bond. And then the Leafkin Druid is going to make double green soon, which also helps with the Giant. Alright, opponent on Jeskai. Let's, I think, just attack and play Silverback. Don't really want a Wolfkin Bond into 4 open mana. Alright. Well, opponent's pretty far behind. Boreal Elemental. So it probably means that they don't have a planar cleansing incoming. We're one mana short of playing Season of Growth and playing the Wolfkin Bond here. So what happens if we Wolfkin Bond? We can put that on the Troll. Could also Wolfkin Bond the Silverback, which would make it a 7-6 here. I think I like bonding the Troll, and then attack with Troll and Shaman. Can we afford to attack with the Octo Prophets? I don't think so, since it could chump and then eat Octo Prophets. And then we still get to keep up the one mana for the uh, Troll's Hexproof here. So yeah, if, if we attack with Octo Prophet as well, they eat that with the Elemental, they chump, take for basically since they gain one. Don't think that's quite worth it. Here they can double block the silverback and kill it, but we get to kill elemental and draw a card and hit them with a troll as well. And then next turn we can just attack with everyone maybe. Yeah, putting the wolfkin bond on silverback means that we can maybe trample over but then the 3-3s three are maybe unable to attack since the Silverback wouldn't be lethal by itself. But then the 3-3s three get blocked pretty easily by the Boreal Elemental. And then imagine our opponent playing a Sleep Paralysis or a Pacifism on the Silverback. We don't even get to draw the card, so that would be pretty bad. I think this makes sense, because now we also get to leave up Hexproof. We're pretty far ahead on board. And if we draw any more Pump Spells with Double Season of Growth, we get to go off. So we could play Howling Giant here, probably attacking first, can attack with everyone. I guess the reason to play Giant first is in case we lose a creature and Druid would no longer make double green. But now we get to keep a Pax Proof, which seems more relevant. They could have the in the rare instant that makes two 3-3s, three that's probably like one of the worst case scenarios, but even then, it's not too bad. Outrage, that's fine. So... They would survive here. And Outrage could have been a reason not to attack with the wolf, since now they get to gain one instead of having to chum block the troll. But they do go down to one life. So they're still in a pretty bad spot. Now, do we tap out for this Howling Giant? I guess we can't anymore since we lost the creature. So we'll just play Season of Growth times two. So yeah, we could have played Giant pre-combat, and that could have been reasonable. Now we do give them a lot of information here with Double Season of Growth about maybe how our deck is built. But uh, we're by no means guaranteed to win, so I think we should still play them out. So... 
They are dead on board if they don't have anything else. That keeps them alive. Yeah. Winged towards the Boreal Elemental could indicate that they have some more flyers, so could be a reason to bring in the Giant Spider or the Mammoth Spider out of the sideboard too. Play the Cloudkin in case we draw something that wins us a game on the spot here. Oh, I stacked those triggers incorrectly. I should have scryed first before drawing, uh, but that's okay. Do we want to draw land? Don't think so. All right, that's a good one. And then do we want to attack with a wolf? That would trade for the bird grabber, and then this wouldn't make double green anymore. Although we're probably playing the growth cycle next turn anyway. I think I'd just attack with a troll. Opponent jumps with bird grabber. Also, let's say they did have a pump spell for the chaplain. Then that would gain them a ton of life. So maybe the attack with the wolf would be bad. Harold, that's fine. Yeah, I could have played a tracker's second main, but I wanted to keep a pack proof on the troll. I think that was more important than tapping out for the tracker. Alright, so what to do next? Mammoth Spider is a consideration. We saw the 4-4 Angel, we saw Boreal Elemental. We had a 3-4 Flyer, so the Mammoth Spider could be decent. I don't think Pulse is necessarily where we need to be. They did show a Chandra's Outrage. They could have some Flyers where gaining the life is useful, but they're also blue-white, so they could have a bunch of removal that doesn't put our creatures in the graveyard. Anything else that stands out, I guess... 2-2 two, two creatures aren't great against a 1-3 lifelink, so I could see taking out a Greenwood Sentinel. Although 2-2 two, two pumped by a Growth Cycle still gets past a 3-4. Befuddle might not be necessary. Befuddle is also pretty bad if we're trying to target the 3-4 uh, Flyer, since it costs us 2 more mana. So yeah, Befuddle could come out, Sentinel could come out, and we could consider bringing in like a Mammoth Spider. Don't think this is relevant. Stick out Befuddle and bring in Spider. We're also going to be on the draw, so it's going to be slightly easier to cast our more expensive cards. We'll try this. Alright, this is going to be a mulligan. And this is not a great hand, but I guess we'll keep... We also mulligan on our previous hand and still got there, so hopefully our draws are generous. Definitely want to play the forest in case we draw a troll. So next turn we could play a Mammoth Spider. Drawing a Season of Growth would be nice, as that's one way to get back, even in uh, terms of card advantage. Now if they attack with a 4-4, I don't think we can block, since we really need the Spider to stick around to leverage these pump spells. Reduced to Ashes is pretty painful. Alright, so we might have to Paralysis the 4-4 four four here. Otherwise we're going to fall a bit too far behind. Could also make a riskier play where we try and block and then both Growth Cycle and Feral Invocation. Don't think that's the way to go. The one issue with Paralysis on the ground creature is that we might have a harder time dealing with a Flyer that the opponent plays in the future, whereas technically we could use the pump spells to trade off for the ground creature. I think I'm still gonna do this though. And yeah, opponent could play the 6 mana angel next turn, they could play the 3-4 flyer, which we're gonna struggle with. But we're gonna need to get lucky to win this game. If we draw Season of Growth, we need to get less lucky, because then we can potentially draw two cards. So there's the air elemental. 
which is also another flyer we're going to struggle with. All right, let's hope to find something useful. All right, well, how close are we to casting this? Three, four, five, six. I guess we can cast this next turn. Do we want the Barkhide Troll? Don't think we do. So I'm just going to keep the Giant. And then hope to cast it next turn to stabilize us. Angel, alright, that's fine. So if they can deal with our 5-5, five five, then we're still fine. Should have probably attacked first, but... Yeah, I'm fine trading this off for the Angel. At 11 life, I don't think we're going to be able to race the opponent if they kill the giant here. Oof. That's brutal. Well, they had two pretty nice answers here. For our reach creatures. But uh, Mammoth Spider was definitely a good sideboard card here since their opponent's got a ton of flyers. So we're taking seven. And yeah, we're nowhere close to dealing lethal on the way back. Not sure what we can draw to get out of this. A land's not gonna cut it. So yeah, we're just dead. Don't think I want to show them any pump spell. So yeah, we could kill both if we cast the invocation. Is there any reason why our opponent wouldn't attack with the two flyers next turn? I can't think of any. So I don't think I want to show them any additional cards. They know that we have double season of growth, so they can expect us to have some pump spells. But if we don't have to show them for game three, then might as well keep that information hidden. So they don't know exactly which pump spells to play around. So I mean, we mulliganed and we almost uh, managed to stabilize. Just needed to dodge an answer for the giant. But now we've got a bit of a better idea of what our opponent's deck is trying to do. I guess Natural End could be an okay option to destroy the Sleep Paralysis. Did they show us any other artifacts or enchantments that we could kill? I guess this also kills a Golem token from the Splicer. So Natural End could be an okay sideboard option. I don't think the Greenwood Sentinel does much in this matchup. They've got so many 1-3s that block this profitably. I don't think Drake does enough. Protection from red is not the protection we need in this matchup. Protection from uh, white or from blue would be much better. And I don't think uh, charge is where we want to be. Not enough one toughness stuff for the bow. So I'm thinking if we want to bring in Befuddle, what to take out. Tracker could be too slow since they're not really attacking us on the ground. And card advantage doesn't seem as important as just answering flyers. So I think I want one Befuddle. Overcome could also be okay for trying to race, but I think we just took out a few too many creatures for Overcome to be great. It's only good if we play Howling Giant first, so I think we'll try this. Alright, we've got a keepable opening hand. Scorpion into Season into hopefully Feral Invocation draw card. Could be a nice sequence. Alright, that's a nice pickup. Now we're not forced to invocation the scorpion, we can just progress our board first. Even though we don't have another elemental to put the counter on. And we get to scry. Hmm, well, I mean, that's a good card, although we don't have double blue. Can we realistically bottom that? I don't think I can. 
We're gonna draw an island at some point. Next turn we can invocation. Hopefully after the opponent blocks. Perfect. So, still at the very least got a 2 for 1 out of the deal here. So let's see if they have the sleep paralysis, aerial assault instead. Alright. Hmm, no island, that's a bummer. Forest is really a bad draw here since that kind of means we're flooding out and we're also not helping us uh, cast elemental. Forest is only useful if we were to draw the 7 mana giant. Alright, so had a promising start but now we're waiting for either an island or some action. At least we can pay the 2 extra mana for this elemental, not a forest. That's bad. Definitely attack first, since if they trade, I'm happy. And then we'll Paralysis. Alright, well, we'll need some help off the top here. Just drawing any creature to help us cry with the Season of Growth would be useful. Islands would be an okay draw. And now we can scry towards some more action. Bottom all those lands. Barkai Troll. It's not terrible, not great. I don't think I can keep that. Just doesn't do enough by itself. Even though it helps us cry with Season of Growth. I mean, it's definitely better than a land. I don't think this is quite gonna cut it. Pump spells would be decent draws, the giant would be good, some more flyers. Alright, Scorpion is blocking the golem, given a chance. Opponent hangs back. Alright, I guess I wolf can bond here, just to draw a card. And then I'll keep up one of each. Not much interaction they can have for double whites. Alright, stringing to get a bit of card draw here. Another season of growth. Hmm, that's interesting. So if the game goes really long, then another season is pretty useful. So here we kind of have to evaluate how long we think this game is going to go. If we think it's, it's going to be decided in the next couple turns, we don't want it. If we think the game is going to drag out, then... I think it's worth uh, keeping. I think we probably keep it. Yeah, I could not play the Cloudkin yet to get an extra Scry. Since now we aren't really taking advantage of a Scry. We miss out on a two-powered Flyer, which can maybe get a few attacks in. But waiting to improve our card's selection drastically could actually be worth it here. So I think I'm gonna pass and then just play Season into Cloudkin next turn which will let us cry twice before drawing. Alright, Vanguard. We can potentially just trade with the Seer. And the 1-1 tokens get blocked pretty easily. Alright, reduced uh, Scorpion. So now the 4-4 can attack. Had we played the Cloudkin Seer, we could have double blocked. So we're taking 4 additional damage here. But our opponent's got only one card left, so we could win the late game here. Right, let's make sure to stack these triggers correctly. Both scries before drawing. We could also like scry, draw and then scry. I think I still want to just make sure we hit action instead of bottoming a land and then drawing a land. Well, that's pretty good. So now I wish I had stacked the triggers differently, so we could have scryed after drawing. And Howling Giant plus Season of Growth is also quite a combo. We'll get to scry quite a few times now, 
so we'll basically get to draw whatever we want. Alright, so here we've got an interesting decision. We could double block the 4-4, or we could single block the Vanguard. So how do we lose this game? Let's say our opponent has an answer for the Reach Giant, and we trade it off for the Golem. Then we won't have an answer for the Flyer, opponent could play more Flyers, and we could end up taking a lot of damage. Although if we trade Vanguard for Cloudkin, then we're taking 4 now. I guess the upside here is also that we get to eat the Soldier token for free. So I think... This makes a little bit more sense, since next turn, presumably, the ground is going to be stabilized by the Howling Giants if they don't have a counterspell. So the Golem's not going to be too impactful. That's totally fine. I'm actually surprised they didn't save the Flyer. Alright, opponent's empty-handed. This Giant's going to stabilize the entire board. And... let's see... Does this matter? I guess it doesn't. So we get to scry, bottom all those lands. Bottom. Get some more scries. Bottom. Bottom. Well, <laughs> we would have drawn quite a few lands here. Octoprophet. Now that's interesting. So we've got two more scry triggers coming up. But we also have a Leafkin Druid to scry. I think I would rather dig towards some pump spells to draw cards instead of just scrying more. Alright, Rabbit Bite is probably good enough. Plays well with our seasons. So we're kind of hoping the opponent plays a, a flyer we can kill now. Alright, opponent says go. So let's play the Leafkin. Scry first. Bottom. Bottom, alright. Well, so far, the keeping the extra Season of Growth definitely paid off, otherwise we would have flooded quite severely. Now, we don't have to Rabbit Bite uh, the 4-4 four four here, but I think I want to. They're not too likely to have anything to mess it up. And draw two cards. Alright, Silverback is good. And then I can attack with the 5-5 five five as well. Could also attack with the Wolves, they can double block one with the Chaplain and a 1-1, one one, which isn't a great trade. But I guess that gets rid of some creatures. And the other Wolf can get in there. I think I'm fine attacking with all. And playing a Silverback. Point also has to play around Pump Spells. But they're still gonna go for the double block, which makes sense, we'll kill the Splicer. Scry some more. Seems fine. Yeah, we can have a look here at our deck to see how many lands we bottomed. Three, four, five, six. We've got nine in play. So we have two lands left in our deck that we can draw. So let's go ahead and attack. Draw two cards. Alright. No target for the natural end yet. Opponent just scoops it up. We even had Befuddle here that we could have used on the elemental as well. Or we could have used it on our own creature to draw three cards. Opponent packs it in. Well, that was a pretty interesting game. The mulligans couldn't defeat us. Alright, decent looking hands, except that we don't have double green for troll, but I think we still keep. We could get lucky and draw forests, and we at the very least get to play Lynx and any land gives us Crasher. So definitely lead with the forest here. So no turn to troll for us, sadly. I guess uh, turn 3 troll will do, we get to keep up protection, so... In a sense, we're also playing around 
our opponent having removal. Alright, I think I prefer playing Crasher over Frostlings since tapping down a Sentinel doesn't really do much. Opponent on a red green, they missed their third land drop. So they must have drawn the Sentinel last turn. And a Goblin Smuggler, so they can hit us for two if they make Sentinel unblockable, which is fine. So next turn, we could Rabbit Bite, we could Frost Lynx. I guess Lynx plus Scorpion makes sense. Alright, they're gonna hang back. Now I guess we can just play the Shaman. Opponent could double block the Troll, and we would trade Troll for Smuggler. Isn't an amazing trade, but still, like, a reasonable. And then Shaman is going to be hard to deal with for a red-green deck, unless they've got the Reduced Ashes, but then they still need to hit some land drops. So yeah, I think I like Attack with both, Trade Troll for Smuggler, Deal 4, play Shaman. The alternative for Frost Lynx would also be okay, but I think Lynx is going to be more impactful after we drop the Silverback Shaman. Just make it very difficult for the opponent to double block. Imagine having Feral Invocation here, giving plus 2, plus 2. That would have been a blowout as well. And then next turn we can Lynx plus maybe Rabbit Bite, we'll see. So your opponent looking like a relatively aggressive low curve red green deck here, although of course stuck on land, so don't know that for sure. Just gonna take two here, don't want to run into an opposing pump spell when we have links to tap down Sentinel. Opponent's just gonna hang back, so probably keeping up a pump spell to try and block one of our creatures. Now a Rabbit Bite could prevent that from happening, or we could just Lynx. I think I just Lynx since I want to just play more creatures anyway. Could have tapped our mana a bit better, so we could still Scorpion plus Rabbit Bite here. But I think we'll be okay. Since I'm probably not gonna Rabbit Bite this turn anyway. Just hit for 9. And do I play Scorpion? Don't think we can get punished too badly. I guess they could have like Flame Sweep, kill Lynx and Scorpion, but it still leaves us in a pretty good spot. No Flame Sweep end of turn. So they seem pretty dead. Alright, so our opponent got stuck on mana. We had a decent curve. How do we want to approach this matchup? Red, green. Pulse could be okay, don't think we need natural lands. Cerulean Drake could be reasonable, although the only red creature we've seen so far was a smuggler, which the Drake doesn't really prevent from doing much. And the green creatures are uh, still going to be an issue. So I don't think Drake is what we want, unless we see some big red creatures instead. Plus the big like red creature, like the 6 drop has menace as well, so the Drake doesn't really stop it. So unless they've got like some random 5 mana fire elementals, the Drake's probably not going to be too effective. I think we're good. And seems reasonable. Turn to season. Just need a third land and we're off to the races. Two cards that synergize with the season as well. All right, Amber Cats. All right, Greenwood Sentinel. So, what's the play here? Just Frost Links tapping down. Probably the Amber Cat to prevent ramping. I'm okay trading Lynx for Sentinel, I guess. I 
I should have scryed before. I guess we need to target before scrying anyway. Because when the Frostling's ability goes on the stack, we need to choose a target. So even though the Season of Growth is going to resolve first, we still need to select the target before we get to see what's on top of our deck. Tracker seems decent. It's just a 2-4 blocks pretty well on this board. I think we can keep it. Opponent attacks. Of course, our opponent could have their own pump spells, which would make blocking bad. So I could also see just taking two here, since we've got our own pump spells to combo with the Frostlings. Yeah, I'll just take two. And then I think the plan is attack with Frostlings, unless they play good blocker. Play Crasher. All right, they've got their own Crasher. And I don't think we can afford to block in their turn if they attack with all. So we could play our own Tracker, we could play our Crasher here, I think, are the considerations. Could also attack with the Lynx if they block, we can Feral Invocation. I think I'd rather just play Crasher, see what they do, take a big hit, and then next turn we can keep a Befuddle and all the other interaction. I think land is fine, lets us Rabbit Bite plus Befuddle. Eventually we'll have to get more mana going. So hopefully they can kill the Crasher, otherwise we could be in trouble. But if they just attack, then uh, we'll be fine. And Dragon's fine too. Alright, so our opponent probably doesn't have any pump spells. So we'll just take four. Another Sentinel. So I think I like using Rabbit Bite, killing the Dragon, and then keeping up Invocation and Befuddle. Alright, Giant's a good one. And then next turn I can put the Crasher in front of the Crasher. And hopefully Befuddle is enough interaction to uh, save our Crasher. Could also double block. Um, I guess that's fine. If they have a plus two plus two, then double blocking would still kill the Crasher at least. And we also don't take any trample damage, so it makes sense in the grand scheme of things to double block as well. Now if they have two pump spells, things could get messy. So yeah, Befuddle, targeting our own creature would draw a card with a Season, targeting the opponent's creature only draws a card from Befuddle itself. But pretty effective combo trick here. They put our Crasher first, which means that if they do have plus two plus two, they don't even get to kill the Frostlings. Ooh, all right, plus three plus two changes things a little bit. But now we at least still kill the Crasher, so glad we double blocked at least. Overgrowth Elemental, we can play Tracker to kind of stabilize the ground. We could play Season of Growth plus Feral Invocation to draw a ton of cards. Or we could go Overgrowth plus Season, but these don't block really well in the face of the Greenwood Sentinels. So I think I just play the Tracker for now. Alright, I guess you're right. The Overgrowth Elemental would put a counter on the Frostlings, making it a 3-3. So I guess it would have been fine. Yeah, sure. I kind of want to hit my land drop so we can eventually get to Howling Giant, but can't go wrong with a, a free 2-1. Yeah, playing Overgrowth Elemental might have been slightly better since then we could have dropped a Season of Growth as well. But 2-4 uh, is still a pretty good blocker here too. Alright, opponent's got infinite Greenwood Sentinels. So a 2-4 lines up pretty well. So now I'm thinking we want to play Cloudkin plus Season. And then next turn grow the Seer with the uh, Overgrowth Elemental. So now we get to Scry twice and then draw with the Cloudkin. Or we could do the Scry 1, draw Scry 1 again. Which maybe is better. I kind of want to just draw land here. So I'll do Scry 1, draw Scry 1. Yeah, land seems fine. Forest would be slightly better, but we can still play both green spells with just two forests in play. 
we'll draw the land and then we can scry additional lands to the bottom unless we want to keep lands to cast the Howling Giant. But we'll probably draw a seventh land at some point, Rabbit Bite is great. So we'll keep that. Play a land, say go. Alright, so we're in pretty decent shape here. Now if our opponent has Overcome, giving all their creatures plus two plus two and Trample, we could be in trouble. So that's the primary card we want to try and play around here. Smuggler we can kill thanks to our Rabbit Bites. So they get in for two. Do we want to grow the Cloudkin Seer or do we want to grow the Frostlings? Maybe we actually grow the Frostlings in case they kill the Tracker so we have an additional blocker that lines up well against all these 2-2 creatures. And I'm not too worried about winning the long game, so even if we don't speed up our clock as much, it's not a concern. So I think the player is going to be Elemental, Pump Frostlings, and then we can Rabbit Bite, fighting with probably the Tracker on the Smuggler. Or maybe the Frostlings. Don't know if it really matters. And then... Uh, yeah, we'll put the counter there. Scry twice. Kind of want to draw 7th land eventually, but we don't need to keep it on top necessarily. I'm sure we'll draw land at some point. Although the Giants is the best play we can make against an opposing Overcome. So getting the Giant in play as soon as possible could be worth it. I think I'll still bottom for now. And then we can Rabbit Bite, killing the Smuggler. Opponent's got double red up, so Shock doesn't matter. And plus 3, plus 2 we can't really beat. So I guess we'll fight here. And draw two cards. Eh, there's our land anyway. So next turn we can drop the Howling Giants. And for now just attack for two. Seems reasonable. Let's see if they overcome next turn. They'll have 16 power of trample. We have 6, 9 toughness. So we would still survive. Yeah. And it's not like 1 toughness is going to add much to our defenses. So yeah, the plan is giant next turn. And then draw some more cards with uh, Feral Invocation. A Marauding Raptor seems like a dubious inclusion in a deck with a triple Greenwood Sentinel, Amber Cat, and a Goblin Smuggler, but I guess if you play it afterwards, it's fine. And Gross Cycle's decent too. So let's attack for two and then play our Howling Giant, which should shore things up nicely. Can't keep up uh, Gross Cycle here. I guess we can represent having Unsummon. So we get to scry a bunch more. Basically draw whatever we want here. I guess, let's see, already played both Rabbit Bites. I guess we want to dig towards maybe a Flyer. Maybe a Sleep Paralysis as another removal spell in case they find another Smuggler type effect. More Pump Spells, another Growth Cycle will do. I really want to be planning for like the worst case scenario here. So even though we're super far ahead now, just want to think of all the possibilities of things that could go wrong and kind of plan for the worst. So I think that means trying to find a removal spell like sleep paralysis. All right, and now with all these pump spells in hand, we can pretty easily have some good attacks. There we see Ripscale Predator. So this is the one I mentioned where the Cerulean Drake would not necessarily be a great blocker since this has Menace and we would have to double block it. Alright, well, double growth cycle is pretty good here. Let's see, if we attack with everyone, do we present lethal in any way, shape or form? Want to make sure we don't die on the way back. Opponent's got 5, 6 blockers. We're at 10. The thing is, if we keep back blockers, we need to keep back at least 2 for this Ripscale. Could be okay to send everyone. Yeah, I think I send. I don't think our opponent can survive and present lethal on the way back, given our hand. And if we can make them like trade creatures, so a top deck to overcome is less devastating, I think we should go for it. Yeah, 
so right now our opponent would be taking 7 plus 8 plus 2, so that's 10, 17, so they should just be dead here. Alright, so this doesn't matter. Just need to make sure not to tap our uh, additional green mana. All right. Bam. All right, sweet. So we're two and zero so far. Alright, so we're on the draw with a decent opener. Again, missing the double green on Troll, but this will do. Still gonna play the forests. Uh oh. Turn 3 Risen Reef. I guess we're in trouble. Probably just play Cloudkin Seer, and then next turn we can Overgrowth Elemental. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat uh, card advantage from the Risen Reef. But we'll try. So now we could play Air Elemental or we could Frostlings a Crasher. Playing Elemental is just so much more mana efficient that I think we should try, even though we can get punished by Rabbit Bite. Opponent could have Reduced to Ashes, they could have Paralysis. I guess the alternative is going 2 drop plus uh, 3 drop, which would also be okay and doesn't line up as poorly against one of those big removal spells. And I think I overgrowth instead of links. They might have bigger creatures later that we need to frost links. Yep, Risen Reef doing its thing here. All right, Season of Growth isn't bad. So let's go Growth into Lynx. I guess we can actually do everything since the Leaf Kindred is going to make double green. So yeah, we can actually do everything we want here. Lynx. And then, doesn't matter. Tap down the Boreal. Could also tap down the Crasher, but then it's going to be super obvious we have a Growth Cycle in hand. Well, it seems good. And then attack with all. And then we'll grow cycle whatever the crasher blocks here. Well, this was a good turn. So we're just trying to tempo them out. Gifts, that's fine. Alright, crasher can give trample which could be relevant. Opponent's got three mana up, so going for Wolfkin Bonds could be slightly risky. Although if we target the Barkai Troll, then it has Hexproof in case of any unsummons, although then it doesn't have Trample or Evasion. Could also be fine to just attack with everyone, play Air Elemental, and have another big flyer for this Boreal Elemental next turn. And then we can even give a Trample with Crasher next turn as well. I think I like that the most. So yeah, let's just attack for now.
That opponent's chumping anyway. Chumps a troll. Do they have the convolutes? They don't. Well, it seems pretty good too. Leafkin Druid gives us a mana to cast it. Well, looks like we might have a chance to beat turn 3 Risen Reef into double elementals. Ooh. Well, I take that back. Well, not much we can do about this. Now we're in trouble. Now the Leafkin Druid doesn't make double green anymore for the Giants. So unless they have Unsummon in hand, this wolf can bond on Aerial Mantle is pretty strong. If we want to play around Unsummon, we should just attack first and then play Crasher. But it's so good if they don't have Unsummon here. Alright, that resolves. Let's cry again, don't need more lands. And attack for six, which they're forced to chump. Alright, they did have the pump spell. That was brutal. Let's flame sweep into the growth cycle here. So this giant is going to have to do some heavy lifting. Another season of growth. Now I don't think we want to keep it since I'm looking for additional pump spells instead. Uh, rabbit bite would be good. Alright, that's fine. No attacks. Well, at least we got the rid of the Risen Reef, so they're not drawing a million cards anymore. And they are at six. They used the pump spell already to get rid of the air elemental, so the Howling Giant can hopefully hold off this flyer. Nah, that's an easy take three. And then now we don't have any elementals in play, so there's no real point in playing Crasher unless we want to scry first from the Season of Growth, which I guess is also a relevance, so we scry first before drawing with Growth Cycle. Although, let's say we draw into another Growth Cycle or a Befuddle, we might not have the mana to cast it afterwards. So I think it's correct not to play Crasher first. And then how do we attack? Probably just send everyone. See how they block. Oh yeah, we already have a growth cycle in the graveyard, so this one's plus five, plus five. Now, of course, our opponent has a million mana up. They could have all sorts of interaction. <laughs> Another flame sweep. Jeez. Can growth cycle to save a wolf. If we growth cycle the giant, it's a 10-10, but they can still trade it off. So I think I do growth cycle a wolf in response here. But they get to trade off both creatures and draw a card. That seems good enough. All right, well, hopefully they're out of tricks now. No, we needed that pressure. Still gonna have to use this. Well, this game's uh, been a lot of back and forth. I thought we were super far ahead. Twice now. 
but her opponent had all the answers. Tracker's decent. Don't really want to trade Scorpion for Amber Cats. That's fine. Could even put an upkeep stop to draw into the Silverback, but we're probably better off just playing it after drawing it here. Well, at least that's reduced, that's not killing the Silverback, preventing the card draw. Yeah, our opponent's deck is pretty stacked. Oh boy. Well, got a top deck of Rabbit Bite now. <laughs> I said our opponent's deck was stacked, and then a second later they played a Dracoseth. Jeez. Yeah, Rabbit Bite was kind of our only out here. We have two of them in the deck, we didn't draw any of them yet. Would have been nice, Scorpion kills Dracoseth. Sadly, that's not the case. And next turn Dracoseth is just lethal. So I guess we'll have to attack and then hope to draw into something with uh, the Silverback. Now the problem is, I think my only out is Rabbit Bite. So I think I'm supposed to attack with the Silverback only, have it die, and then draw into Rabbit Bite to fight Dracoseth with the Scorpion. Because if I attack with both, then I can block Scorpion with Amber Cat and Rabbit Bite is no longer an out. Taking it would be risky from their perspective if we have a pump spell. Yeah, opponent takes it. Well, that's too bad. Almost beat the Risen Reef. Then we got uh, Flame Swept. Then Giant seemed to be doing the trick. And we got Flame Swept again. And then we seem to be uh, stabilizing here and taking over. And then Drunkestath happened. So opponent's got a lot of uh, dragon-flavored bombs. Do get to draw a card here. Just a forest. So they could have gone for lethal, but they didn't. I guess we need to redraw. Alright, just a land. Oh well. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough one knowing what they have in their deck. Double Flame Sweep Dracoseth. So the best answer we have to Dracoseth is Paralysis or Rabbit Bite with like a Scorpion or another big creature. Probably want to take out all the cards that are weak to Flame Sweep if we can. Sentinel seems pretty terrible. And then we can maybe bring in Octoprophets. Drake blocks the Dracoseth, but it doesn't deal with the enter the battlefield or the attack trigger, so it only helps so much. Act of Treason could be an interesting option to steal Dracoseth and attack, but I don't think we have the mana to make that work. If we had ways to splash red, it would definitely be a nice one. Don't think we need natural ends. Mammoth Spider seems okay against their flyer. Pulse could be okay to just get back stuff that died. Although they have double reduce to ashes too, so that's going to exile a lot of our big creatures that we want to get back with pulse. I guess scorpion itself is kind of weak to flame sweep, so that could be a reason to take it out. Although it is kind of nice with rabbit bite if we need to kill a Dracoseth. But I guess we just need to hope to be far enough ahead on board where our opponent's forced to block and we can use a pump spell to get rid of it. Because yeah, scorpion seems pretty bad against the flame sweep deck. Eh, I think we'll try this. Yeah, Cerulean Drake survives Flame Sweep, but a 1 1 with Pro Red doesn't block a giant trampling gorilla from hitting us in the face. So that was a sweet game, though. A lot of back and forth. If it weren't for the dragon, we could have been uh, victorious. Do I play a Frost Lynx for no value? I don't think I do. Mm, 
Well, we could have gotten in quite a few attacks now already. I guess I'll play it now. Invocation seems fine. And there's a silver bank, as expected. Should have played my land first in case we drew a befuddle as well. Might have wanted to befuddle instead of cycling. So the Lynx is going to get reduced most likely and then we'll have Giant as a nice follow-up. Ah, spider. It's fine too. Let's see if they block. Ah. Still going to play the Giant. Another Mammoth Spider. Seems okay. Probably better than an average draw here. So we're hyper aware of Flame Sweep. Opponents got their own season of growth. Into Reduce. Alright. I think I send everyone. Yeah, opponent's got Flame Sweep anyway, so these wolf tokens are not long for this world. Scry first and then draw. Prophet seems fine. So we want to keep Paralysis for Dracoseth as much as we can. Silverback can stay. And I don't think I'm playing the Tracker in case I have double Flame Sweep here, since that would clean up everything except the Spider. And we're probably winning anyways. Alright, there's a blue mana. So they might have had some blue cards stuck in hand. So they'll need something else. Elemental. Pumps the Risen Reef. So as it stands, if we tap down one of their blockers, they would still be taking at least eight. All right, they've got their own rabbit bite, so they should be dead here. Although never mind, I guess they fall to one, but they're forced to chump, which is still a pretty good spot for us to be. Want to make them chump with a risen reef instead of the elemental. So let's uh, paralysis. So, had I played the tracker last turn, I would have had lethal here, which is worth pointing out. I'll play it now, it's another season can go. But there are two, even if they play a Dracoseth, we have plenty of lethal. Another rabbit bites. Gifts up to five. Well, they might actually be stabilizing here slowly. Cantrips the growth cycle. Alright, hopefully they're dead. Alright, well, we managed to win a game. That's good. Got to see a bit more of the opponent's deck as well. Although I don't think we change much. I guess Natural End can destroy the opponent's Season of Growth. Although I don't think we saw any other targets for it. Still don't think I want the Cerulean Drake. So I think I'm still okay with my setup.
I guess our disenchant also has um, Gift of Paradise as a target, although that's not a great target necessarily. This hand has all our 5 drops basically, except for Air Elemental. Don't think we can keep, sadly, even though our opponent's deck is kind of slow. But uh, yeah, if we don't draw a ton of lands, this hand doesn't do anything. This is rough too, but I think we gotta keep. Hope to draw either a forest or a third land. Probably bottom the befuddle. Because if you find single green, then Leafkin can make double green for Shaman. Just a nice ramp card. All right, gonna need that land soon. Do they have the Risen Reef? Just a gift of paradise. All right, just in time. I think we still play the Cloudkin. Because if we play a Leafkin, we're not even guaranteed to be able to play the Silverback next turn. Opponents got their own silver back. I think I leave Kin. Not a rabbit bites. So that's not really doing it for us. If we try and stay back and use growth cycle as a pump spell, we get punished by opposing growth cycles, opposing flame sweeps. I guess we can growth cycle plus rabbit bites, killing the shaman. Can't kill the elemental since we'll have to pay the extra mana. There's no way they block the cloudkin seer if we attack here, otherwise attacking, having them block growth cycle and then rabbit bite would be the best case. And then I'm probably just going to grow cycle plus rabbit bite to shaman. But yeah, we're super in trouble if our opponent has any good follow-up. Kills our mana creature. Alright, well, I guess we'll play this. Could also attack first if we fear they have a flame sweep in hand, which they could easily. In which case we at least get in two points. If we elemental first, then we get in no damage. I guess two is better than zero. Three is better than two. We'll see the flame sweep end of turn. And just a pulse of Morassa, still pretty good here. Gaining six, getting back the silverback. We're pretty far behind. Dragon two. At least we can attack into that one. Uh, we can play Crasher first for Trample, but Trample doesn't really matter on this board, and I don't want to give away additional information. So I think I attack, see what they do, and then I can either Crasher or Rabbit Bite, although Rabbit Bite is risky in the face of Flame Sweep. Opponent on taps. And yeah, we're just dead. Oh well, we tried. A bit of a rough mulligan in the last game. And uh, we got uh, Dracoseth in the first one. Oh well, still lots of uh, close games there, so let's see if we can get a couple more wins. 
and nice opening hands. All right, land would be nice. Let's make sure to scry before drawing, since we definitely want to draw lands. Hmm, don't think I want the Crasher. Alright, more Rabbit Bites. So, not gonna trade here because Rabbit Bites lets us easily get rid of this Vampire. Ooh, Iron Foot. Alright, so I think I might actually want to do the Growth Cycle plus Rabbit Bite trick to get rid of this Warlord. Since this is kind of a long-term issue, plus it also just uses our mana efficiently this turn. So let's cycle. Right, Scorpion's also a nice one alongside Rabbit Bites. Next turn we get to play some nice 5 drops. I think we'll lead with the Silverback. It's kind of close because the Silverback doesn't really attack into the Death Touchers on the ground all that well. Could also just play the Wolfkin Bond here. And the only card that really punishes us is like a Disfigure. And we could just Wolfkin Bond, make a 2-2 on the ground that blocks profitably and attack. Yeah, let's go for it anyway. And do we want to land? I don't think so. And this 2-2 wolf just lines up much better than our 5 drops would on this board, facing all these death touch creatures. Happy to block. They could have a pump spell. I think that's fine. Alright, so here we can attack for four, play our elemental, play scorpion. Seems decent. I imagine if they had removal for the flyer, they would have played it last turn. So I'm not too worried about them having an answer for our. 4-4 four, four flyer. Another season of growth. I mean, it kind of replaces itself with a rabbit bite just by itself, so I think we can keep that. Make any future pump spells even better. Keep it on top. Could have also not played a scorpion since the scry wasn't too useful this turn. But if they attack with a troll, probably means they have a pump spell, in which case I want to just block with the scorpion instead of the elemental. Potentially. And also trading scorpions could be reasonable. Alright, so let's just attack with the flyers. No need to do anything pre-combat. And anything we need to play around, Planar Cleansing comes to mind. So I could not play the other Season of Growth, so it doesn't die to another Planar Cleansing if they have it. Seems reasonable. So we'll just uh, play the Silver back. We give up on a Scry 1. In the unlikely scenario where they do have a Planar Cleansing, we at least still have the Season of Growth left in hand as a nice follow-up.
All right, so we got the first one against Abzan Death Touch creatures. How do we want to sideboard? Well, Befuddle's pretty good against Death Touch creatures, so that's an option. Pulse could also be okay. Didn't see any artifacts or enchantments that need killing. I guess the Heartpiercer bow could also take out all those one toughness creatures. So that could be a consideration as well, even though it's kind of slow. So yeah, bow, befuddle, pulse could come in. What don't we like? Sentinel still fine as it kind of just trades for the 1-1 one -one death touchers. Gives us something to do early. Yeah, I mean, there's not a ton of bad cards necessarily. Not sure what to take out. Yeah, I think we can probably stay put. We still have one befuddle in the main deck. Don't really see anything worth taking out. But we'll maybe reconfigure for the third game if they do have even more Death Touchers, for example, or One Toughness Creatures, then maybe the bow comes in. Hand looks okay. Bit creature light, but I don't think we can mulligan. Turn to Leafkin Druid is scary. Although we did pick up another creature here at least. Alright, Central Courser. So I might just cycle this Befuddle. Or I could keep it to maybe get a nice trade for this Courser if they don't expect it. Although that involves taking. A hit here, another three next turn. Before we can even set that up, I think I would rather just cycle this. Essentially gain three draw card. Alright, so... Scorpion's a nice one alongside Rabbit Bite. Although I probably just want to play a four drop this turn. And then hope they don't have a pump spell, otherwise we could get kind of wrecked. So we'll take three. Bones down to two cards in hand. And then that caster spider is fine. Alright, so the board is pretty manageable at this point. And we still have the Scorpion plus Rabbit Bites to basically murder anything the opponent plays. So here, we've got a few options. If possible, we want to keep the Wolfkin Bond and the Rabbit Bite until after we draw a Season of Growth. Although that might not be possible here. Could just play Crasher plus Scorpion. That seems reasonable. Crasher prevents Spider from attacking. So the opponent doesn't really have any great attacks. Unless they want to trade for the Scorpion, which I doubt they will. Unless they've got... Maybe a way to get back a creature from the graveyard. Alright, opponent plays lands, let's go. I mean, we can just start activating the tracker here, we're not forced to necessarily do anything. The Wolfkin Bonds doesn't really open up any amazing attacks. So I think I just start tracking. Although Tracker sadly doesn't find the Season of Growth, which is a card we most want to find. So I think I'm just going to pass a turn. We've got a Mana Sink, our opponent doesn't. So they kind of have to make the first move. And if we find Season of Growth, that's great, but the Tracker could just find more creatures in general. Octoprophet, for example, let's scry towards one of those aforementioned cards. Vampire. Alright, I guess we'll take the flyer. And then Elemental plus Invocation could get past the Mammoth Spider. So I could play Elemental right now. And just play Elemental. Hold on to the Rabbit Bind for now. And then we could Rabbit Bite the Mammoth Spider or the Netcaster Spider next turn, plus use Feral Invocation to get past uh, the Reach creatures here. It's also kind of tricky what we kill with the Rabbit Bite, whether it's the Netcaster or the Mammoth Spider. 
since if we kill the netcaster, then the Aral Mantle doesn't attack past the Mammoth Spider necessarily, whereas it, if we do it the other way around, the Aral Mantle would trade for the netcaster. Netcaster only has three toughness. So if they give it plus three plus three, a six six Aral Mantle can still trade at least. So I think I do Rabbit Bite the Mammoth Spider. And then attack with a Trampling Aral Mantle thanks to the Crasher. And if they block with the Netcaster, I'll pull the trigger on this invocation, I think. I could have also played the Overgrowth Elemental, make this a 5 5. But if we can get the blowout, it's probably better. Alright. And then. I could play this now. And then. Just bump the elemental even more. Also, if there's sandbagging, sorcery speed removal for the elemental, then we're kind of putting all our eggs in one basket. But of course, the problem is with growing the crasher is that the uh, crasher doesn't attack past the vampire. So I guess I will put it here. What are my thoughts on Vampire of the Dire Moon? It's pretty decent. I mean, it's kind of like a slight upgrade over Sash Scorpion, which is a fine playable. Although Sash Scorpion is in green, which is a color of Rabbit Bite, so it kind of gets better because it's in green. So we could go all in on this Aerial Mantle and basically have a two turn clock. I think that's worth it. And I'll play my land since we have a tracker in play. Let's say we draw land next turn, we could track, find a 4-drop and still play it. So they're pattern matching. Not a Reliefkin Druid. It's not going to be enough here. So they seem pretty dead on board. They can gain one from the Vampire, but we still have 9 power in the air. Alright, sweet. All right, so we're three and one. Let's see if we can keep it up here. All right, double growth cycle, Octo Profits and Aerial Mental. Seems keepable. Hopefully we'll draw something cheaper to put on the board. All right, that's a good one. So they could already pump the knights if they don't have anything else to do. And that touch means that uh, it's going to be difficult to get rid of. So we're hitting our land drops at least, but we're not doing much in the early game. So this knight is going to do some damage. Can't even profitably block it with the Octoprofit next turn. Alright, Season of Growth is going to help. So we'll play the Octoprofit to dig for a Rabbit Bite. It's probably the best we can find. Bottom both of those. And then next turn we could season plus growth cycle, or we could just play our 4 4 flyer. But yeah, we're kind of taking a beating here. Alright, Frost Lynx is going to give us some breathing room. So we probably have to go Season into Frost Lynx. We'll take two from the Raptor. Could also play Aral Mental, but then we're potentially taking six from the Knights. Unless we want to chum block. That doesn't seem great. 
think we got a season into ra into frostling. So hope to top deck a rabbit bite soon. Well, there we go. Keep the Octo Prophet back. And then next turn we could grow cycle plus rabbit bite to maybe kill the knights. Uh oh. Feral invocation. And down to three. So now we need to deal with a flyer instead. Well, this is not good. I guess we don't have to grow cycle to kill the raptor. We can just uh, rabbit bite using octoprofits and then keep grow cycle on defense. Maybe that's the play. So let's do that. First strike, of course, doesn't matter when fighting. Not that rabbit bite is an actual fight spell. But even if this was like a prey upon. The first strike would not matter. Alright. We'll uh, say go. And then we'll have to do some blocking. So this can become up to a 7-8. Just attacks with it. I guess never mind, they can pump this twice. So if you double block, use both pump spells, do we kill it then? It's gonna have 11 toughness. I guess we do get to kill it. I guess this is plus 8 by itself. So 11. So I guess technically if they don't have any interaction, we could just block with uh, only the Octoprophets. I think that's the plan. So I'll growth cycle. Opponent's gonna pump in response. And then I'll pump again. And they can pump again. But that doesn't matter, so they'll probably just let the trade happen. And have four mana left. Alright, they don't have any action. Alright, we're kind of doing it here. Get to play Howling Giant here, which seems better than Elemental. And I can even attack for two. Thicket Crasher. What do we think about Thicket Crasher? Seems okay. Probably above average draw here. Although we will get like a million scries here from the season of growth, so we can be a little bit picky. But what are we looking for? Maybe another rabbit bite. I've already seen double growth cycle. We've got a Wolfkin Bond in hand. Maybe something to play alongside Air Elemental instead of a 4 drop. Snatch Scorpion, not quite. Alright, so it's gonna be a mystery what we draw here. May or may not be better than a Thicket Crasher who... Wake Root Elemental. Well, at least they're stuck on double green here, so they're pretty far from using the ability. But that is a good blocker. We could Wolfkin Bond the Howling Giants attack. They have to double block to trade, which is fine. We could just play the Flyer. Still attack with Howling Giant, got plenty of blockers back. And we also get to add Overgrowth Elemental to the board. I think I like developing the Flyer here. Bottom the lands. And then I can Elemental putting the counter on the Air Elemental. Which also seems decent. Should have attacked first here since I think I'm attacking with the Howling Giants. Right, that's a good one. Well, now I guess I'll wait, since we can potentially get the blowout if they block. So our opponent adds some more power and toughness to the board. That's fine. Ooh, they're looking at the graveyard. 
So that probably implies they have maybe a soul salvage, in which case we don't necessarily want to trade off creatures. And we might be better off just sending in the flyer, since we don't want the knight coming back. Although, wouldn't they have just cast the reanimation spell here if they had one? I could wolf can bond the arrow mantle. Makes a 7 7. And I could invocation as well. So we'd basically have a two trunk clock exactly. Although they could send the Blood Burglar to gain two life, so it's not necessarily lethal. I think I do Wolf can bond the Elemental. And we could still have lethal next turn with the invocation. Troll seems okay. Just by attacking with everyone next turn, we could still have lethal. Since their opponent only has four blockers at the moment. Alright, never mind. So had we gone for the invocation, then we could have forced them to attack with the Blood Burglar. Now I'm just going to hang on to it, since we have a 2 drone clock regardless. Opponent doesn't have any amazing attacks, but they're also pretty far away from using the Elemental's ability. Befuddle's pretty good. So, we've already cast both growth cycles, so I don't think we have any other pump spells we can draw towards to maybe have lethal right now. So I'm just gonna send the 7-7 seven, seven here. But at a moment's notice, we can invocation, draw Befuddle, and have access to that as well. We can also Befuddle our own creature to draw an additional card. Alright, so that's gonna force the issue here. But that means they're dead on board. So I guess it doesn't matter. So maybe I don't even show them additional cards here. Yeah, because if we draw this, then we'll also have to show them the Befuddle. Yeah, they're just dead here. I'm not going to show them the additional Befuddle. How do we want to sideboard against Black Green, featuring lots of Necromancers, featuring Knight of the Avon Legion, which did a ton of damage that game. Befuddle is pretty good against Death Touch in general, and the Knight of the Avon Legion. Sentinel lines up kind of poorly against all those Necromancers, so I could see shaving a Sentinel for an extra Befuddle. Another Octoprophet could be okay. Mammoth Spider blocks the 3-3 Elementals, or uh, Necromancers, quite decently. So that's another option, but I'll try this for now. Season of Growth has definitely done a lot of heavy lifting this draft. Keep having these opening hands with like a single Forest and a Bark Eye Troll, which is a little awkward, but I don't think we can mulligan. So we kind of want to draw Forest, but we also don't want to Flood out. Island is the worst draw. Ooh, Thief. Well, we better draw a Forest now. Uh-oh. Well, this Thief could get out of hand. Next turn the Tracker can block it reasonably well, but if our opponent has any removal spell to keep attacking, we're gonna just fall too far behind. So I guess I could also play the Troll, which keeps up the Hexproof ability. So at the very least, if they do have removal, I can still trade for the Thief. Although if we play the Tracker, we also discourage the troll from attacking if they don't have any interaction. And playing the tracker is also more mana efficient. So it's kind of close here. We haven't seen a ton of removal from the opponent in the previous game. But they could have like an agonizing siphon. Which I guess doesn't necessarily kill the tracker. They could have murder itself. I guess playing tracker is still fine. This figure would be reasonable too here. 
for the opponent. So that could have been a reason to play the Barkai Troll, but we haven't seen it in the previous game. This figure is an uncommon. Alright, looks like the tracker did the job. Okay, so far so good. So now we can Wolfkin Bond on the tracker, make a 4-6 and a 2-2. Two -two. Or we can just play Troll and keep up Growth Cycle which could also be reasonable. We basically just want to make a board stall and then get ahead with the tracker's ability. So we don't necessarily want to add more enchantments onto the tracker in case they do have removal. So I think that means playing troll. And I don't think we need to rabbit bite anything since the board is relatively stable the way it sits. And then we can maybe wolfkin bond the troll and keep a pack proof. More mammoth spiders. Alright, Leafkin. So... I think I do want a Wolfkin Bond here just to discourage any attacks. And the next one we can start activating Tracker. And we get to keep up the Hexproof ability on the Troll. Alright, they've got their own Tracker. Now that is... Worth killing with a rabbit bite, potentially. And elemental. Alright. So how about we play elemental? Hmm, I guess if we rabbit bite and we don't get to keep up the hexproof ability. So I guess the most conservative play here is just to leaf kindred, rabbit bite, keep up hexproof. That seems reasonable to me. I guess we'll rabbit bite first. For single green, there's not much they can have. Our opponent did show us the Fun Lurker, so I think I want to keep land in hand to discard or to exile to that effect instead of playing it out here, since now with the Leaf Kindred we'll have plenty of mana anyway. Even though now we don't get to grow cycle and use the ability, but I think that's a worthwhile uh, trade off here. Scorpion and Champion. Alright, so we're not going to be attacking on the ground anytime soon. Our opponent's got double spider, so attacking with elemental is going to be tricky. But now we've got the tracker going, which can draw us a ton of extra cards. I guess we'll play the elemental first. And then. I'll play the land now, since the tracker is pretty mana-hungry. And we still have a land to exile to the Fun Lurker anyway. Say go. So the board is stalled out. It's not going to change anytime soon. Not a tracker's bad news, so now we both have one. But we have more mana than the opponent, so we can maybe leverage our tracker a bit better. So I think I main phase it. The 2-4 blocker is not too impactful. Could also attack with the air elemental, to be honest, since even if they double block, our air elemental would survive. But then next turn it just gets blocked. So we just trade a growth cycle for a mammoth spider. And maybe we're better off waiting until we find a uh, season of growth first to get value out of this growth cycle. I think that makes more sense. So let me main phase this tracker. In case we find something cheap we want to play right now. Well, not something cheap, but something impactful here. Play a land, say go. No attacks for now. Again, holding on to this uh, pump spell for after a potential season of growth. That's fine. Sleep Paralysis. Alright, so now we potentially can get through with the air elemental. If we Paralysis one of the spiders and then grow Cycle, we basically get rid of both. Or we can Paralysis the Tracker to disable it. And um, then they won't have a Tracker, whereas we do. So we have two approaches. We've got kind of the beatdown approach. 
clear a path for Errol Mantle. We've got to grind the approach, deal with her tracker, and be the only ones left with a tracker in play. We don't have much removal in our deck. We've got one more Rabbit Bite. We've got Paralysis. So we do want to be mindful of any bombs our opponent could play that we need to answer. But I don't think we need to prioritize Killing Tracker at the moment. So I think we just play the Giant for now. Just add some more Power and Toughness to the board. And kind of just chill for now. This game could also come down to decking. We'll see. Still keep land in hand for the Fen Lurker. Just in case. Alright, Wake Roots could be scary now. As it can make a ton of 5-5s. Five Don't have a way, an easy way to deal with that. I guess we could Sleep Paralysis the Leafkin Druid, but that seems like... Kind of an awkward use of a Sleep Paralysis. Alright, so four is to draw. So our opponent making 5-5s five out of their lands. It's gonna be an issue unless we find more auras to enchant our creatures with, so we can make a 7-7 seven, seven, for example to hold off all those 5-5s. Five, fives. But eventually this is gonna kill us. I guess I'll track her first still, see what we draw. Do still have a couple seasons of growth lurking uh, in our deck that we could draw at any point. I think Shaman makes a bit more sense here. So we could just tap out for it. Shields down on the troll, but it doesn't matter too much now that we have Giant in play as well. I don't think attacking with everyone's great here, with her opponent having a Scorpion and lots of power and toughness. Again, could be aggressive with our uh, Elemental and get rid of these spiders instead. And we might be able to outrace the 5-5s five from the Wake Root. For now, I think I'm playing the Shaman. Drawing a Season of Growth would really help in kind of uh, outlining our game plan. Jungle Hollow, so now our opponent has another green source, so they just need a single forest before they can use the Wake Roots ability. So I don't think Paralysis on Leaf Kindred is necessarily the way to go. Opponent misses on Tracker and we find a Season of Growth. Alright, so that's what we needed here. So now we could go on the B-Town with the Arrow Elemental. So I think I'll start there. Play Season, attack with Air Elemental, see how they respond. And then ideally we draw into another Rabbit Bite soon to kill this Wake Root. We've got a bunch of cards at the bottom of our deck that we have seen with the tracker. Don't remember exactly what those cards were. I think our opponent's probably holding priority with her Barkai Troll. I guess if we wanted to play around our opponent having their own growth cycle, we could have used Paralysis on the Spider. Opponent just takes it, which makes sense, considering we just played a Season of Growth. So... Now I'm probably just going to use a Tracker. Do I use it now? I think I wait. So, we'll have to wait and see here. Opponent plays Lance as go, so they could start making 5-5s, five fives. they could use Tracker. Alright, these are both good. So I guess we'll take the Cloudkin as another evasive threat. Untap. So yeah, presumably your opponent's just going to start making 5-5 five five creatures with the Elemental. I think I'm supposed to play the Cloudkin first. Scry draw. See what we pick up and take it from there. So this has been a pretty grindy game. Two very creature heavy decks. Frost links, all right, that's pretty good. So now we can links probably the spider so that even if they have a pump spell, we can beat it. And just try and close out the game with our two flyers. So we'll attack for four. Kind of hoping they block. 
Could have also considered attacking with the silver back. Because we're happy if that dies at the end of the day. Alright, draw lands. So, looks like they have a response. Maybe. Ooh, murder. Well, that's kind of the worst case here. Alright, so there goes our plan of uh, beating down with flyers. So now we have to come up with another plan. We've got 15 cards remaining to our opponent's 20. So we're probably going to be decking first. What other flyers do we have access to? Not too many. Beating this wake root elemental is going to be difficult. Paralysis is not an answer, so we have to hope to draw a rabbit bite or something. Kill the wake root and eventually just overpower them on the board. So how does sleep paralysis factor on into the equation there? Probably just hold it for now. But yeah, this is going to be tough. That 4-4 uh, four, four flyer was a big part of our game plan. And eventually the opponent's going to overwhelm us with these 5-5 five, five lands. So not sure how we're supposed to win this one. Pretty much found all the creatures in our deck. We've got a rabbit bite left, a growth cycle left, another season of growth. Bunch of lands on the bottom. And these are just going to be too many 5-5s five to deal with. So yeah, the first order of business is hope to top deck or second rabbit bite to kill the wake roots. But then Cloudkin still needs to get past double spider. Which is going to involve maybe paralysis on one of them and then a growth cycle to get past the other one. So I think that's how we need to win this game. So yeah, step one is Rabbit Bites. Not a growth cycle. I guess we might as well go for the attack here. Do we also send a silver back? I think I'd rather have it on defense now to trade off for a 5-5. Five five. And I can't afford to use growth cycle just as a way to get extra damage in. I have to get rid of the spider since one spider will need to be answered by the paralysis, the other one we need to get rid of through the growth cycle. So we can't afford to play it now, even though we would like to dig towards our second rabbit bite. Opponent takes it. And every turn that goes by gives the opponent a chance to make another 5-5, five five, which is not good for us. I'm pretty sure we didn't see any rabbit bites with the tracker's ability. So I'm kind of reluctant to activate it, since we have a bunch of known cards on the bottom that aren't Rabbit Bites, whereas it might be somewhere in the top. So I think we're not supposed to activate the tracker here. So I'm just gonna pass a turn, I think. Should have got better track of the cards we found with the tracker. So our opponent gets to make at least one more 5-5. Five five. And yeah, we're still going to be decking first, so we're the ones that have to somehow deal lethal damage. So also kind of seeing the drawback of a removal spell like Sleep Paralysis, not really dealing with utility creatures. Alright, there we go. So I'll Rabbit Bite using the Troll in case they have any shenanigans. Can still give it Hexproof at least. Hope they don't have a way of getting back the Elemental from the Graveyard. And then we can Paralysis one of the spiders, cycle to get past the other one, and we have a couple turns to get there with the Cloudkin Seer, which is going to be tricky. Alright, Octoprofits. That works. Alright, so let's Paralysis the spider. Attack with the Cloudkin. I guess I can play the Octoprofit first to set up my draw, in case we draw something relevant. I guess I'll do the Scry 1 before the Scry 2. Befuddle seems relevant. Can maybe beat the Death Touch Scorpion or shrink down a 5-5. Five five. And then do we want the Crasher? Don't think that does much for us. 
and then I'll attack with the Cloudkin. Hope they don't have another murder. Because I don't think we can beat that. Opponent uses a tracker. Also really can't beat any reach creatures or other flyers. That's fine. Alright, so we finally opened up the skies for this Cloud Seer. We'll keep land on hand in case of fan lurkers. Say go. Alright, so next turn we can maybe get adventurous and attack with some of our ground creatures since we have Befuddle. We'll see. So we've got a 7 turn clock, 11 cards in library. Don't think we have a ton of relevant cards left. Uh oh. Well, that's the problem. So that's gonna probably kill the Cloudkins here. Or just become enormous, that also makes sense. Yeah, I don't think we can beat that one. Of course, now we regret using the sleep paralysis, but we waited as long as possible to keep it in hand. Feral Invocation, I guess it speeds up our clock. But uh, at 2021, it's gonna be tough to beat. Even with a befuddle. I think Invocation is our last kind of pump effect. We went through the bond, double cycle, double rabbit bite, now Invocation. So we've got a 5 turn clock, 4 turn clock. Need to somehow trade off for the Hydra. I guess we do have a Scorpion in our deck. That's true. Although this does trample and we already used double rabbit bite, so I don't even think Scorpion is going to be good enough. I mean, I guess I still attack with the Cloudkin here. Since we have to win the game at some point. So yeah, I could activate Tracker to dig for Scorpion, but I don't think it's going to be good enough, even if we find it. Although we're pretty likely to hit it, since we only have six uh, cards left here, including a Scorpion, and this looks at the top four. So we can basically draw a Scorpion here. I guess we'll find out. So I guess we can keep up Befuddle then, which is also pretty bad. So there's a scorpion. Sure. Can speed up our clock a little bit too. Give us a two turn clock in the air. But I don't think we're surviving this attack. Yeah, and they still haven't drawn their uh, one mana vampire. That's going to be difficult to beat as well. Alright. Pwn's digging. Oh yeah, blocking here is going to be... Pretty tricky, so they do find a Knight of Abel Legion, which is also a threat by itself. So I'm probably just gonna go mute for a second here to figure out these blocks and hopefully I don't time out. This can trade. I guess we want to trade for the black-green one. This can trade. This can trade. This can eat a 3-3. Three, three. This trades. And this triple blocks. I think this is acceptable. It's possible we have some better blocks available. Yeah, if they have pump spells, we're in trouble, but I didn't think we can play around those here. They can make green mana with the Leafkin Druid. Uh oh. What is this? Looks like maybe a Feral Invocation on the Hydra. Blade Brand, that's fine. So does just trade now. Couldn't they have? I think they could have killed us had they given the Hydra Death Touch, because they could have assigned one point to the Druids. Thanks to Death Touch. And then trampled over for the rest. 
So they probably should have targeted the Hydra there. Well, the board got a lot smaller all of a sudden. This feels more comfortable. Alright, so I think we have to go for this two-turn clock with the Cloudkin. Do we have enough back to survive? We'll have uh, three blockers plus a Befuddle, six cards remaining. It's gotta be good enough. Do we have any relevant cards remaining in our deck? I guess the, the creature there. So yeah, I think we just send in the Cloudkin. There you go, and hope they didn't draw anything useful. But uh, if this last card is nothing backbreaking, and if they don't find anything with the tracker, we would have a lethal next turn. We don't have to block the scorpion necessarily, since that doesn't present lethal, and if we can, we should keep up the fuddle in case of uh, any pump spells or rabbit bite shenanigans. So I think that means blocking like this. I guess I can force them to pump the Knight of the Abel Legion. This is gonna eat whatever we block with anyway. So this seems okay. So we have us taking one, going down to one, and we still have Befuddle as backup in case of a rabbit bite, in case of a pump spell on the Scorpion. All right. So that pumps, that's fine. Alright, I think we can go to damage. Although if they have a rabbit bite, they probably fight with the Knight of Abel Legion, which we can't prevent with Befuddle. Thief, yep. No. <gasps> The trample! The trample's gonna be relevant! Wow! What a game! That's fine. Wow! What an insane game! M20 is just amazing. And no words. I can wait on the server after that game. Alright, are we ready, chat, for the last match of this pretty epic draft? Let's go. Alright, so we're on the draw. With a hand that's potentially good if we draw a single forest in our first uh, two draw steps here basically. We've got nine green sources in the deck, so we could get there. If we don't draw green source right away, even if we draw it by turn three, turn four, we could still be in reasonably good shape. So this hand's somewhat greedy to keep, but on the draw I think we keep it just because it has so much potential if we do get there. I'll try it. All right, always had it. All right, it looks like our opponent's got a combo here, bow plus vial of dragonfire. Yeah, not exactly sure what's up with cars being cut off. Must have been something with the update that changed it. Ooh, a double growth cycle could be fun. Just gonna send for two and then play Elemental. Mm. 
No convolutes, that's good. You know, the sand could really use a season of growth. But uh, as it stands, we're still doing fine. So, let's see. If I Wolfkin Bond, we'll get a fourth creature to make double green with a Leafkin Druid. Opponent does have five mana up, which is a little bit sketchy to like go for the Wolfkin Bond. But I think I do want to play it. They didn't have a counterspell last turn. So I think I go for it and then probably target the tracker in case I do deal with the elemental somehow. Alright. Tank for eight. And then next turn we could just kill them with all these pump spells. Could save the wolf with the growth cycle, I think that's worth it. Alright, six mana, opponent says go. So if we send... Probably should have uh, played my forest and attacked with the Leafkin as well, and then used my pump spell on the Leafkin Druid instead of something else, in case they have a bounce spell. So I think we showed them the extra growth cycle instead of the invocation. Probably targeting the wolf. All right. So now they don't necessarily know about the Feral Invocation, which they might play around differently than Growth Cycle. So our opponents on blue-green, they've got probably the Weaponsmith in their deck. That's all we know so far. Maybe they had a third color that they were missing. It's definitely possible too. Two Toughness creatures are a bit vulnerable to the Vial of Dragonfire. So like Scorpion, Sentinel could maybe get cut here. Although against a green deck, having a Death Touch creature to go with Rabbit Bite can be pretty valuable if we need to take care of something big. So I don't think I make any changes. Natural Land can take out one of those artifacts, but usually we can uh, deal with them. I guess against a bow, Scorpion's not the best. So I guess it's two strikes against the Satch Scorpion, so maybe I should take it out. And then make room for either another Octoprophet. I could add a Natural Land, Mammoth Spider. If our opponent's playing blue, they'll probably have some flyers. And try this. Alright, uh, hand seems fine. Overgrowth Elemental into Octoprophets and draw towards whatever we need. Alright, let's play the Forest first because we have a Troll in our deck, which is double green. Turn to Leafkin Druid is pretty scary. Uh oh. Risen Reef. That's bad news. So we definitely want to kill that as soon as we get the chance. Which means next turn. No elementals to go with the Overgrowth Elemental yet. But I think I still run it out there over the Sentinel. So if they do have some answer for the Overgrowth Elemental, we can still go Sentinel into Rabbit Bite next turn. Whereas if we play Sentinel and they deal with it, we can go Overgrowth plus Rabbit Bite in the same turn. Rabbit Biting, Risen Reef feels bad, but it's just going to provide too much advantage over the course of a long game that it has to be dealt with. Alright, so Arisen Reef already drawing the opponent two cards. Let's uh, keep it at two if we can. Opponent does have single green up, but there's nothing for single green, I don't think. Alright, so... 
We had to use one of our premium removal spells here to deal with the Risen Reef. Don't really like blocking when we're holding a growth cycle. And our opponent could have their own trick. Gifts could also indicate a splash. Although so far we haven't seen any third color and an octo profits one top one bottom all right silver bank was a good one i think i attack with both if they block i growth cycle they probably just take it here although maybe i shouldn't be attacking because I, I really want to play the shaman here instead of having to use pump spell on the sentinel this is fine this i can let happen all right that's fine too so i'm just going to play the silver bank here And then next round we can go Profit plus Growth Cycle. Opponent did keep a card on top, so this could be something scary. Pulls getting back Risen Reef. Oh no, it's back. Opponent's at uh, a million life. So it's going to be difficult to really race them before they just drown us in card advantage. And we only have one Rabbit Bite left in our deck to deal with the Risen Reef. So yeah, hopefully the opponent's top decks aren't too kind to them and uh, they don't draw any elementals. That's of course the easiest solution to this problem. For now we'll just send... I'm okay with the trade, I think. Save the growth cycle for when they try to block maybe the silver bank. All right. Well, that's an easy decision. Well, that's an elemental. So we weren't able to dodge. So that's fine. So the best chance we have is probably just drawing one of our Seasons of Growth to draw some additional cards as well to keep up. We've got two of them in the deck. All right, that's the reasonable two. So we'll just send both. And then probably gonna use the growth cycle if they block. We didn't have any elementals in place, so didn't need to play the crasher pre-combat. Opponent takes it. Opponent of course knows about growth cycle. We cast two of them in the last game. File. So now they could combine Vile plus the Bow to shoot down a 3-toughness creature. But uh, the Growth Cycle could save the Crasher. And block their Crasher. So this seems okay. It's still a trade, but seems like a worthwhile trade. All right, well, scry two lands to the bottom. Hopefully we don't flood out. But we are ahead on board. Put any elemental off the top and the tides can uh, change pretty quickly here. All right, opponent is jumping down to 12. We'll keep the land in hand to keep them on their toes. Opponent gives us a GG. I guess that's a good sign. And Tracker was a good draw here, too. I'll play out my land now, because we have the Tracker going. Might need the extra mana. Alright, Spider. Plugs pretty well here. But that's a pretty good draw, too. 
So what happens if we attack with everyone? That seems decent, since they probably have to put the spider in front of the silverback anyway. Because this tramples, so they can go block, block. So I think we're supposed to send everyone. Even though they could have interaction in hand, which could make this a reasonably bad attack. But given the follow-up in our hands, I think we'll be okay. Double chump. And in blue-green, even with the Gift of Paradise giving access to all colors, don't think there's anything that really punishes us for playing this. Netcaster. Well, the finals was maybe a little bit anticlimactic, but I hope the other games made up for it since, uh, yeah, M20 is a sweet format. Lots of close and interesting games. And we got to another five wins. All right, so let's claim our prize. And crack some packs. All right, what do we have? A wake root elemental, saw it in action in this draft. Can be good if the board stalls out, although again, five green mana is not easy to find in any deck. Anything else in this pack that stands out? The Audacious Thief, pretty good, especially if you can combine it with a smuggler. So those would be the two considerations in that pack. Alright, Shared Summons, haven't seen this in action yet. Five mana instant. Search your library for up to two creature cards with different names and put them in your hand. Could be okay. It's like kind of a slow slow card, but it does kind of give you a two for one. Can find two creatures. Presumably you've got one big one that uh, can kind of win the game for you. So seems okay. The alternative here is probably Flame Sweep and Reduce to Ashes as two nice red cards. And even the Frost Links in blue is worth mentioning. So yeah, not not exactly sure if Shard Summons is better than like a Flame Sweep or a Reduce to Ashes, but it's probably on the, like, the same power level at the very least. The format seems pretty grindy, so spending 5 mana not affecting the board would normally be pretty bad. But in this format you can probably get away with it more often than not. Ooh. Well, this Planeswalker is pretty busted if you can protect it. And of course the plus two kind of helps you with that as well. can pretty easily make the first elemental, and then it's also not too difficult to kind of string together a couple of the 4-4 elementals. The fact that the flyer is an elemental also has some elemental synergies. So yeah, this card seems pretty good for limited. Just gotta make sure you have enough early plays to kind of gum up the the board so your planeswalkers are not too vulnerable. And what else? Chandra is also excellent. The Fan Lurker is okay. Got some other nice ones, Bone Splinters, Scorpion, Winged Words, so pretty stacked pack overall, but would definitely still take the Mythic Planeswalker here. All right, Drawn from Dreams, another nice two for one that digs pretty deep. So kind of in the same vein as the Shared Summons. So pretty decent card, especially if you have ways to get it back from the graveyard. There's a few of those in blue at uh, Uncommon. The Wave Crasher is also quite decent. Uh, Siege Breaker seems okay. I've got a few synergies with this in uh, red black. So would probably take the Drawn from Dreams, as it's also just a single color instead of the Siege Breaker. And yeah, I think Drawn from Dreams is probably worth it over the Wave Crasher. Even though I could see a deck with a ton of elemental synergies and enter the battlefield triggers where you would rather want the Wave Crasher if it's late in the draft. So the Wave Crasher is kind of better in probably blue-green, whereas the Drawn from Dreams is going to be maybe a bit better in blue-red or blue-black, where you don't have as many elemental synergies. Repeated Reverberation, not an easy card to set up. 
requires a lot of mana and a lot of instants and sorceries. So I don't rate this particularly highly, but of course the payoff is there if you can make it work. Uh, anything else that stands out? This isn't too exciting. So yeah, kind of an underwhelming pack. Fencing Ace can be kind of a build around if you put some enchantments on it or some equipment. So not sure what I would take, but uh, definitely a lot weaker than some of our previous packs. And there's the Scholar of the Ages, which is one of those cards that can get back. Powerful instants and sorceries from the graveyard. Ooh, Omnath. Omnath is undoubtedly powerful, although not the easiest card to uh, include in your limited deck since you'll need some mana fixing, but if you take it early, then you can kind of prioritize the mana fixers, the Gift of Paradise, Evolving Wilds, there's a couple of them, and of course Elementals have a ton of support in the set. The decision here is between Omnath and the Scholar. Scholar keeps you in one color, even though it kind of nudges you towards blue-black and blue-red, as those colors tend to have the best instants and sorceries to get back. But you could still play this in any blue deck, whereas Elmnath is a pretty big commitment. But the payoff is definitely there, since this will win you any game where there's a board stall, and can maybe even kill something when it enters the battlefield. So, kind of uh, pick whatever you feel like playing. Temple of Melody, again, temples are totally fine, even if you only have one color that overlaps with it, just as a scry one to improve your draw. Um, this is a good sideboard card, I wouldn't main deck these types of cards. It's different with the creatures, but the spells themselves I wouldn't recommend main decking. Uh, Boreal Elemental and Leaf Kindroid are probably the candidates out of this pack over the temple. And uh, yeah, both are quite good. Leafkin Druid just giving you a relevant two drop. There's not a ton of those in the set. And also Elemental for Elemental Synergies. Mana creatures are always good. So the Leafkin Druid has a lot going for it. And then the Boreal Elemental is a difficult to deal with Flyer, which is also great. So both cards are excellent here. And then I guess Might of the Masses, if you're in a Go White deck, can be pretty strong. But I haven't seen or encountered many Go White decks yet. So maybe those are a bit more difficult to assemble. Ooh, Hanged Executioner is great. Three mana to make one one flyers is already a decent card. And then the ability to exile an opposing creature is also a nice addition. So yeah, this card's just excellent. So would definitely first pick this here. Uh, the Scorcher is also great if you have any elemental synergies. There's a, quite a few of them in red, blue and green. Uh, Netcaster is fine. Maybe Inspired Charge if you can make that go white deck work. But uh, we'll would definitely start with the Executioner here. Right, another shared summons and a wave crasher. Anything else? Siege breaker. So, yeah, one of these three cards, depending on your mood, I guess, would be fine. So yeah, want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.